Hello, my name is Grace Wong and I am a professor of government at St. Lawrence University, a liberal arts college in upstate New York. I have been working on the Shilere Galvin for many years. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this archival source, what exactly is it? The Shilere Galvin is a daily chronology of Chiang Kai-shek's life, and they were compiled by his secretaries. The secretaries, one could say, were Zhang's agents in creating a narrative about his leadership through choosing and juxtaposing excerpts from Zhang's speeches, telegrams, and occasional reports with excerpts from Zhang's diaries. The Schiller Galvin, in essence, gives us a window into the drafting process of Zhang's leadership on two temporal levels. On one level, it shows the process by which Chiang Kai-shek constructed his leadership on a day-to-day -day level to motivate himself and his various audiences. We see him responding to the events of the day in his diary, implementing some of his reflections in speeches and telegrams, and then reflecting again on how the day went in his diary. And in this process of observing his public words and private reflections stitched together by his secretaries, we are privy to the ways Zhang attempted to motivate party members, warlords, and even children that he had the right story for China. And of course, on another temporal level, the secretaries were trying to create a draft of Zhang Kai-shek's legacy for posterity. One must also remember that this chronology was a confidential draft meant only for Kuomintang historians, and the process of shaping the information for the public had not yet taken place. So how do these materials contribute to our understanding of Zhang as an individual and to our understanding of Republican history? The Shirley Agalbin is unique in that it follows the intensity of Zhang's reactions to events and not, does not necessarily correspond to the magnitude of the event's significance as judged by later historians. It thus reveals a process-oriented understanding of Zhang's actions that not only helps us understand Zhang's leadership better, but also the decisions he made to affect the course of Republican history. Allow me to provide an example. Major Western accounts of modern Chinese history mention the 1928 Jinan incident only briefly, if at all. The military clash was but a ripple compared to subsequent battles with Japan in the 1930s and 40s, and was a seemingly minor hitch in Zhang's attempts to unify China through the Northern Expedition. Yet, the Shilure's account of the incident provides a markedly different perspective. According to the Shilure, the Jinan incident spurred Zhang to begin an avenging humiliation entry and was the catalyst for him to construct a national humiliation story that would inform and legitimate his political agenda over the next two decades. The Shilure materials thus help to reassess the importance of the Jinan incident and opens a window into how Zhang adapted and wielded a traditional resource such as shame, to construct a powerful story to achieve his political agenda despite confronting a new and difficult situation that threatened to derail it. For me, a U.S.-born scholar who learned Chinese as a graduate student, I was quite intrigued that Zhang inscribed a daily avenging humiliation entry in his diaries and was curious as to why he modeled himself after an ancient king called Gojen. Someone I was unfam unfamiliar with, but it is apparently well known by the Chinese. The necessarily comparative perspective non-Chinese researchers bring to the table can thus provide a fuller picture of Chinese leadership and of leadership around the world. The Shilure Galben brought to life the history of Republican China. It motivated me to learn the words well so that I could understand the drama that was unfolding. And it showed me a particular style of leadership that is underrepresented in Western understandings of leadership.